Guy Barassa from Scandium Canada with breaking news this morning about China's announcements to stop exporting Scandium. Any thoughts on this, Guy? Well, it's not very surprising. Uh, it was going to come anyway. But uh, the world has to, to realize that 75% of Scandium currently comes from China. So definitely it's a very, very shocking news for any end user that are now going to be working very, very hard to try to find reliable sources in a good countries like Australia and Canada. So we, we look at this very positively. I was in a meeting just this week Guy, with a group of scientists that were telling me that scandium is the metal for the future. For those of you out there that may not be familiar with scandium, can you give us kind of a brief overview on why China has prioritized scandium and why, of course, Scandium Canada would know so much about it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, people have to know that the addition of scandium to aluminum completely changes the aluminum properties because it's uh, corrosion resistance, the, uh, the conductivity, dissipation of heat, but more important, it adds strength to the aluminum. Just give you an example, you add 0.4% of scandium oxide into a pure bar of aluminum, multiply by eight times its strength without adding weight. So you can imagine that it's completely changing the aluminum, uh, all the application that you can think of. You wanna reduce the weight of your car, if you're a car manufacturer. Well, you change some of the structural parts that are in, lead, uh, in steel and you change it for aluminum with scandium and you therefore, poof, you're reducing immediately the weight of your car, your plane, your rocket. So it's a, it's a game changer. Currently, the world is supplied, or was supplied, I must say now, by China and, and Russia. 75% of the, of the availability of that material is now gone or under restrictions. So it's going to increase the, the cost, it's going to increase the availability or decrease the availability. So obviously, uh, projects like ours that are in the pre-feasibility stage should get a good bounce out of this and uh, have the, I would say, the end user, large end users, current and large end user, just step in and maybe help us on the way to uh, construction and the start of production. And of course, this, speaking of game changer, this should be very good news for shareholders of Scandium Canada as you just put out an updated resource estimate on Crater Lake this week, which sounds quite impressive. 31% increase in total Scandium tonnage. Uh, talk to us about this, Guy. Well, I was going to say 38% increase in the indicated category, 31% in the inferred category. So uh, we, we had a, uh, in 2024, summer of 2024, seven holes, less than 1,200 feet, and we were able to extend the known resource by 250 meters laterally, still open at depth, still open in all directions, north and south. And uh, yeah, we're very, very glad. It confirmed the continuity of the I-grade zones to the south. So a very unique situation where we have a very, very large, now we're talking over 30, 40 years of production with, uh, with that tonnage. And may I remind people, that it's the only hard rock scandium project currently known and being developed in the world. So, Guy, would you mind adding some additional details from the news release that came out yesterday? Thank you. Yes, there, there are different categories of resources when you do report results of a resource estimate and uh, measured, indicated, and inferred. It all is related to the quality of the information, number of intersections that you have in a specific area. So you need, let's say for inferred, you need three diamond drill results within a 60 meters or 50 meters radius. In the inferred, it's two. So it's, it's to, to be able to determine if there is a continuity of the mineralization between different intersections. We don't have measured resources. We start with indicated resources. When you want to move to the pre-feasibility study or the feasibility study, you need to qualify resources, 
into mining reserves, which must prove their economic viability. And therefore, the only category you can take to do mining reserves is the indicated. You cannot go and take tons that are in the inferred category because there's not enough uh, information to qualify it economically. So it, that's why I was insisting on the fact that it's 38% increase in the indicated category because that's what we're going to be working with for the, um, the pre-feasibility study to determine mining reserves that are going to be at the basis of the, um, the value of the project and the mine life. You know, I'm enjoying your new backdrop, by the way, Guy. It says behind you, the most exciting hard rock Scandium project in the world. Okay, why is Scandium Canada? Of course, I know the answer. Why is it the most exciting hard rock Scandium project in the world? Well, first, because it's the only hard rock project currently. Uh, quality, the, uh, the size and the possibility of increasing the size um, it's a very interesting uh, geological setting that definitively you're going to be adding a lot of tons over time as you drill. Uh, it's surface, it's going to be an open pit. So the, um, the, that quote there comes from uh, a uh, McGill University professor, geologist, that is working currently with a master uh, student to, uh, to acknowledge uh, more importantly, the details of the geology. So they are very excited and they, they make it known that uh, they're working on that project. Well, you've had a lot of exciting news. And again, everyone, it's 38%. And for everybody interested in learning more about Scandium and Scandium Canada, the most exciting hard rock Scandium project in the world, please go to the following website. Thank you so much, Guy. My pleasure, as always.